Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it's March 4th of 2019, and it's uh, almost 6.30 a.m. I just attempted to use uh, Streaming Labs OBS beta to live stream to YouTube. It showed that it was live streaming, but it wasn't live streaming. Uh... Trying to think, did I then I switch to Manicam? Did I try to live stream with Manicam? Can't remember, it's just a few minutes ago. But apparently it didn't work. So I'm recording this using Manicam, which I have checked and works. Checked and work it works. Uh I need to shave. I haven't shaved in a few days. I need to shave bad. I hate facial hair. I hate all hair. Um, as you see, I am back using the uh, headset. The reason for that was with the Blue Yeti microphone when I was looking at the audio settings. I could see that when I wasn't saying a word, uh, the bar was over that much, apparently with like noise, background noise or something. I tried adjusting the gain and what have you still. But when I hook up this headset, it's quiet. And uh, I just get the peaks or whatever when I'm talking. So I think for right now, this is okay. I was actually going to go to one of my other microphones and uh, put it on the microphone stand, but and I have or had two microphone stands. I can only find one now. I think I may have given the other one to uh, Hillary, my daughter, but on this one that I have, there's a little set screw or something that came out. And I'll have to find one that'll go in there to, to uh, or maybe it's a little knob with a, with a, that screws in there, something like that. Anyway, so this microphone should be working good. Um, just using the one lamp over there. Usually when I do video, I kick on the uh, umbrella light. It's see I don't know well this is down kind of the handle here on the tripod is going to run into the monitor you can just barely see the bottom of it way over here right there if I well I guess I can uh, come back here raise it up a little bit go over. there we are And I don't have that on. I do want to. I should do that today. I, uh, I've got a floating head on this tripod. that's really nice and smooth. Except I have to crank down on it. Or it will slowly go down. Uh, yeah, I should order at least one of those plug-in so I can plug the light in. And it works through Echo. I can say Echo because my device back here, I have it set to Alexa. Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 21 degrees. Today, expect a high of 36 degrees. I'm in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, by the way. So there's a big winter storm, I guess, heading for... Uh, central United States into the northeast part of the United States. Then there was uh, tornadoes. Two of them uh, killed at least 23 people in one Alabama county. So says here that Trump's legal woes just got worse. It says the impending Mueller report may just be the beginning of investigations into the president. Uh, 
I usually use Uber. My son, though, the last couple of times has used when he uses my cell phone to go someplace. Uh, he he likes uh, Lyft. On YouTube, I have been looking. I, as I mentioned, the, I think in the last two or three videos. Uh, I go through, I try, I get interested in different kinds of uh, YouTube videos. I watch YouTube videos about, uh, oh, living in Thailand back when Bush was reelected to his second term. I've looked at islands, uh, watched videos from China about how non-Chinese living there, and uh, then there's a Chinese young woman over there that makes some really interesting videos. I watch her, well, I just watch a ton of videos, and it just changes. Sometimes I like binge watch uh, videos on different things. For the last day or two, I've been watching uh, aircraft crashes. Re, they use software like you were going to uh, fly an airplane or play a, a, a video game where you control an aircraft or something like that. They use that software, then they put the parameters in there and have been watching those. I watched uh, the video they made on the Russian aircraft where the, I actually, I don't think he was a pilot. I think there was a pilot, a co-pilot, and they had a first engineer, I believe, on board, and there was another fully competent pilot there and somebody else with him, and I think he had his two kids. I forget exactly because they switched seats. The captain went to the restroom and whatever, but anyway, the pilot or co-pilot or the other qualified pilot had his two kids with him. You remember that probably in uh, Russia. And uh, so he took the command, the pilot's seat, and had his daughter, I think at first, sitting on his lap. And I think the kids were like 9 and 13 or something. And uh, he told his daughter that she could control the aircraft but actually she wasn't she did I guess she put her hands on the stick but it was on autopilot or whatever but what he did is he just changed the clicked you know went up there and changed the settings so it made a uh, a little went off and so when she did that she thought she was controlling the airplane and uh, then he puts his son on his lap now, he told both the kids, you know, don't touch anything. And the kids, you know, didn't really, I mean, so he puts his son on his lap. And uh, then he tells his son, and the son was the younger one, so I think he's about nine. Told him, okay, you know, you can control the plane. And then, of course, he did the same thing. Of course, he put it back on the correct course with the autopilot. When his, so anyway, then he does the same thing. He just makes it so it, and tells the you know the kid okay that way and what he what the pilot what the dad did not realize is that the boy had enough strength in him that he put the stick over or something he he wasn't flop, but what he did when he went over so far with the stick if i understand this correct the aircraft automatically turned off the auto controls for the flaps, I think. I may be getting this wrong. I think it was for the flaps. And these pilots were, you know, all, I think they were all Russian pilots, I believe. They were, at least the captain and the uh, co-pilot were, for sure. I think they all were. And on the aircraft that they normally f flew, I guess this one type, of, I'm not sure if it was a lone, anyway, 
on the aircraft that they were familiar with in Russia, when that thing happened, a light would light up, and a on their on their aircraft that they Russian aircraft. I guess this was a non-Russian aircraft. Uh, a light would light let let you know that the flaps had been disabled. They were not in auto mode, and also there would be a buzzer that would uh, on those. But on this aircraft, they had the light that came on, but there was no buzzer, and. Uh, so then, you know, I mean, nothing happened a little bit, you know, after the kid is still sitting on, you know, then the aircraft starts doing shit and they don't know what's wrong. But I watched uh, watched a couple collisions, watched the one uh, New Zealand aircraft that was doing uh, $384, I think, you'd, from New Zealand they would fly you to the Antarctica and... Uh, I don't think I'd <laughs> what are you going to see, you know? Uh, but uh, they, it was cloudy or whatever, and uh, I think maybe snowy, and they flew into a dormant volcano that is a very high one, maybe the highest down there. They just flew into it. And according to the investigation or whatever, the company had programmed the computer that they would head for that uh, volcano. Of course, when they programmed it the night before or whatever, I don't think the company knew that it was going to be, you know, a whiteout in that area. And the pilot and the co-pilot had no idea that the program had been reprogrammed or had been reprogrammed. They thought they were programmed to fly down through a valley or do something like that. I, I guess that's what happened on that one. But then, and I, I'm not sure if that's the worst accident of, of uh, not that one, but <clears throat> they had uh, one where, and I remember that a little bit from the this, this story, the uh, engine fell off. The engine and the housing and everything fell off of the aircraft, and uh, it turned out when the investigation was done, they had a few days before that uh, done an engine overhaul on the aircraft, and the manufacturer of the aircraft <coughs> gave specific instructions, you know, remove the pod or something, then take the engine and then service the engine or whatever. And whichever airline it was said that they could save, I forget if it was 200 hours or 2,000 hours of man hours. I think it was 200 hours by going in with the forklift and taking the pod with the engine still in it and doing that. And what happened is the forklift damaged the pod. And I'm not sure if they, anyway, when they serviced the engine and they put it back in there, the pod was badly, uh, I don't think a crack or anything sh you know, showed, but the stress or the damage had been done, and as soon as the aircraft got up, almost immediately, the engine, uh, you know, well, not, I guess they flew it to whatever airport it was going to, and it was just a matter of time. And then it was loaded with, you know, fuel. And uh, anyway, I've been watching a bunch of those videos. Let's see. OBS version 2.3 audio effects. I guess I'll have to watch that video by Mike Russell. Logicraft, Logitech Craft is a premium keyboard with a special trick. I have the Logitech uh, 
G910 here. I don't think this keyboard's better than that. Let's warm it up. Let's warm it up. Oh, yeah. Everyone wise up. Gadget Hunter. He's back with an all new video. Why is he clapping? I'm not sure. But well, now I'm hooked. And I need to know what he's talking about in this video. Yes, it's a keyboard, but if you caught my last video about the seven painful truths about the 2018 Mac Pro, you learn I just don't really love the MacBook Pro keyboard. And I know. Well, it could be because it's up there with uh, just as expensive as, uh, let's see, Best Buy, Amazon. Let me look at it on Amazon. I'm very happy with the keyboard that I have. I have several good keyboards. Uh, not really. I guess this is a volume control here on the left. I'm always used to having it over on the right. Oh, I see it's a wireless keyboard. Yeah, I don't think it's, let's see here. Uh, I th I'm, I'm used to having the uh, volume control on the right. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it sort of looked like, well, they're not round keys exactly. They're square keys with a, I don't know. I don't think I like the looks of it. Okay, and it doesn't have, it only has, uh, three and a half stars. And I don't think I need any more. Ah, here's the keyboard that I'm not using. The DOS Keyboard 4. It's not lit, though. That's a nice keyboard. Because of the fact that you have a pass-through, you have two of them, I believe. Both of them available on here. And they're both 3.0, which is unusual. Uh, oh, maybe it's... Wait a minute. Okay, I, yeah, okay. I see they have... That makes it okay. This is the... Okay, that's not the one I have. Okay, is this, oh, this is the Mac. Okay, I don't have that professional three hub. Root with, oh, come on. I wish they wouldn't, ooh, this must be lit, I think. Yes. Okay, how much is this one? I don't want to know. I do not want to know. Oh, no. I don't need another keyboard. RAM usage. Weather forecast. CPU usage. I don't need a GitHub uh, key. Okay, I'm going to add it to my wish list, but I do not intend to buy it. I should bring in my, uh, I, think I'll, I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a, Look this up for their uh, for reviews on YouTube. Yes, stock quotes, <laughs> Stack Overflow. I don't know. I don't even know what T row is. Eh, workout reminder. I guess see, maybe these are things you program in. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do, uh, Weather International, I don't know, I don't know. Ooh, little red light underneath there. 
don't think it said anything about uh, ultimate keyboard for developers. Ah, eliminates interruptions and, and fully programmable. Pre-built Q apps, everything from GitHub and these other things, which I don't know what they, you know. Uh, Q software manage RGB lighting. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. But I'll take a look at it. I'll look at reviews on YouTube. Um, I desperately need to shave. And today is the fourth. I need to put this in my medicine container and get the one for today and take my morning meds. So I'll uh, oh yeah I know what I'm going to need to do too when I upload this video I'm going to underneath there you've seen some links and I've redone the links let me show you by the way uh, what I have uh, discovered here Okay, um, go to YouTube. I um, underneath my videos, I, I I send you to, and at the bottom of my email messages, I send you to. Let me just show you here what. Okay, that's not it. Well, it takes you there. I mean, you could go there, but that's not it. Uh, maybe this is it. No, that's Streamlabs. Skip to. This is. Uh, okay, this is it. Look at this. Isn't this is much better than uh, sending you to my YouTube channel, which is what I do, when I put the link, you know, here are all these videos. So this is, and if you go to about, you get this. And you can click and go to my blog, which I had Nobody goes to it anymore. Facebook has pretty much killed it. Then you can go to go to the Android app and download the Android app. Of course, it'd be better just to go to the, you know, uh, Google Play Store and get it. You can donate via PayPal, and you can shop on YouTube or on uh, Amazon. And if you do, I get a commission. Uh, but this uh, this looks really neat. So let's see, it's about uploads, past live streams, recent activity, my playlist, some of my Amazon reviews, and uh, created playlist, created playlist. Popular uploads, the uh, 52nd video here on the strange bug has uh, got 94,000 views. What is a pill cutter and how to use it has got 59,000 views. Okay. I think 
you can see that uh, oh. people like reviews of or like to learn about something they're interested in and I fit in that category too I guess that kind of tells you to here's the uh, pill container that I use I really raved about it and I still like it but it it's become a pain become a pain to fill out and open those containers up and put go through all my pills and for a whole month to do it that way so what I started doing was just doing one one roll across but uh, this last time I went back and filled it because once you do that then you have a month where you don't have to fill it up Hey, look, here is the review of the one I'm wearing right now. Yay. Or is it? No, it says uh, this is the A6, I believe. And that's the A8. I guess I have the, not sure which one, that's the 8. I'm not sure which one I have on. It just shows you how many videos. This is a video from three years ago. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'm going to have to go shave and take a shower. And It's uh, 22 degrees out there. I am... I'm not a sissy or a wimp all my life. I worked even when I was a welder. Much of that time, especially in the beginning, I was working in a building that had no sides. It was just a roof over it with railroad trains coming through. Uh, where I worked in what we called the shipyard down by the river. There was, uh, And then I, you know, later on that I worked inside, mainly welding in different for different companies, Hess Carriage Company, KW Dart, KW Dart Truck Company, and others inside. Then when I, uh, well, then I worked for the post office a while. My wife and I had a tropical fish shop for four years. Uh, then when I worked hospital security for 30 years, a lot of that time I was outside, you know, and cold weather and hot weather so but now at age 70 I, I think I, my birthday's coming up here March 26 I think I'm going to be 78 but anyway now if I go outside and the and cold air I can't breathe and if the wind is blowing you know cold air and wind blowing by I can't believe I can't breathe so we got some mail to go to the mailbox, but my son, he's about, I think I should know, I think he's about 40. He can take it over. Because once when I was working in a, uh, a blizzard, I sucked in a bunch of cold air and I felt it go down inside and I thought, I am going to pay for that. Then I forgot about it and about a week later, I had all the symptoms of having a heart attack, everything. Numbness in the arm, the whole thing. Went to the emergency room. They checked me and sent me down to the main hospital by ambulance and whatever. And it turned out that it was just a, an infection of the, caused by, I'm sure, that cold air around the heart. Sounds bad, doesn't it? But it, it, it actually isn't. It just goes away and uh, actually the hospital that I went to you know they gave me morphine for the pain and what have you and uh, you know they did stuff if they had just given me a was it a Motrin I think a Motrin uh, which is like a Tylenol or whatever if they had just given me one of those the pain would have went away. And that's what happened at the main hospital. They sent me down there and they did the uh, cardiac scan up in the room and then they sent me down for injection of 
small amount of radiation or something and then doing imaging or whatever. But before I went down, the nurse asked at the main hospital, "Are you? do you still have the pain? I said, yeah, I still have the pain. It hadn't lessened at all and everything. She said, okay, take this Motrin. And I took it. By the time I got downstairs, I didn't have any pain. So but anyway, I don't want to take a big gulp of air here and have... At my age, I don't want to have any medical problems. And as you know, if you follow my video, I was in the hospital for six days with a badly infected leg, and I had and I left AMA against medical advice. And uh, I, I don't think I'd have made it seven days if you know they were going to let me go the next day. But I couldn't make it to the next day. Uh, don't want to go through the whole thing. Just I was there for six days, and they put me on a very expensive and uh, very powerful antibiotic. And I was sick, nauseated, and could not eat for six days. And I kept telling them, you know, they'd bring in food, and I'd take, if they brought in a Jello, I would take a spoonful of Jello. And I could get half of it, like, to melt in my mouth, and that was, you know. They didn't tell me that they had, or maybe I didn't hear them, that they had uh, had to stop, that they stopped my Lasix water pill because the antibiotic I was taking, it would be a, be a deadly reaction or whatever. And uh, they didn't tell me that. And then so I stopped producing urum, urum, <laughs> urine. And then they put a catheter in me. And the nurse hit my prostate. And so the bag was being filled with maybe some urine, but blood for a day. And, of course, she, the nurse and the other nurses that would replace her were saying, oh, I think we're getting less blood. And, of course, I did not want to be, you know, being catheterized, hurt. So I was saying, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think there is, you know, but I knew. So then finally they said, okay, well, we have to take the catheter out and put another one in. And they did. And then you got urine in the bag. But not a lot, and uh, uh, just downhill. Still couldn't eat for six days, and had some other problems. And then I just decided I had to get the hell out of there. They were not happy. So I don't want to end up having to go back to the hospital, but like I'm uh, going to be here 78, so I know that eventually, unless thank, unless I just drop over dead or something, which probably isn't going to happen. Well, it's going to happen someday, but I do not want to go back to the hospital because they're good people and they were trying their best, but they were looking at the monitor and they weren't really listening to me. And uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching.